Uh, my name is Chris, uh, singer at Out to Win. Okay, could you tell us about the origin of Out to Win? Uh, well, Out to Win originally started as Mushmouth uh, back in '95. It was actually uh, uh, spawned from a joke, really. Uh, you know, a bunch of us sitting around here in Reading, uh, in my apartment. You know, getting wasted, acting like fools, listening to, you know, Agnostic Front and and you know some of the bands from you know before or whatever. And uh, I don't know. I grabbed a guitar and I was just kind of playing around with, uh, you know, the chords. I can only do basic chords. I suck at playing guitar, but. Uh, you know, we were just kind of like, oh yeah, we should start a band. And I was like, yeah, whatever, I got responsibilities, like three jobs and whatever, so I can't do it. But uh, I just kind of walked away from all that. And, you know, Mahmood and a few of the other guys from an old band called SWAT uh, decided to start this band called Mushmouth. And uh, that started in 95. And, uh, you know, they went a year of uh, playing kind of biohazard, st you know, style lineup uh, with the bass player and the guitar player singing. And it just wasn't getting, you know, it really wasn't going as far as it, you know, they wanted it to go. And then one day, you know, they asked me if I wanted to try singing. And I'd never done anything like that before. And, you know, I have stage fright like, like a motherfucker. And, uh, so I just, you know, one day I said, all right, well, we'll try it out and see what happens. And, you know, it, it was horrible the first, the first week or so. And uh, I don't know, the first show was like a week after that. And it was at some non-hardcore show it was like variety of bands and uh it was in front of a lot of people and it scared the crap out of me um but that was like the big hurdle and from then it just kind of steamrolled into us playing consistent shows and over the next few years was us even you know driving four or five hours uh and lying to club promoters saying oh we were told we were on the show because this is kind of pre pre everyone having cell phones and internet access so you know you couldn't really deny it because a lot of hardcore was hearsay i mean now it's transpired into everything is online but then it was you know basically phones and flyers we'd be like oh we were told we were on that flyer so we'd show up and they'd be like okay yeah just go on after you know whatever band or before this band or play after the show's closing you know we just wanted to play and you know that's kind of how we, we we ended up starting to get our name out we also had you know some help from some other bands you know kind of throwing out our demos and whatnot and it you know kind of again just steamrolled into uh us gaining a little bit of a following uh and actually oddly enough because we were far from a straight edge band uh you know what really put us on the map was an earth crisis show uh at cc uh, you know, we got booked on it. We begged and begged and begged to play a good show at CC's because we were all, always getting shows with bands that were like not really hardcore bands. They were just kind of like local punk-ish whatever bands. And uh, we finally got this show. We weren't getting paid. Uh, you know, we played first, but we rolled in the parking lot and the line was circling the parking lot out to the road. And we were like, wow, this is the coolest thing ever. And we thought everybody was going to be outside when we played, and it turned out when we played, the place was packed, people went crazy, and that was the start of us being like, okay, we're actually like an established band at this point. So, uh, you know, we kept rolling with it and uh, just made, you know, friends over, over those years with some of these bands, and we just kind of jumped on each other's, you know, shows and went back and forth and, you know, through that whole word of mouth thing, you know, that that hardcore was famous for before the internet ruined it uh <laughs> um you know that that was how we kind of gained our ground and you know we lucked out a few times like you know obviously certain breaks happened for bands and you know we ended up you know kind of we, we actually had when we signed with triple crown uh, you know the guy from the label actually pulled our demo tape out of a trash can um and uh luckily it was listened to and you know in turn that guy you know used to work for profile records and you know so he had a little bit of i guess he had a little bit of money to spend on a, on a, his his label and he put a put you know he had some hardcore bands already like 25 to life and, uh gosh, i can't remember some of the other bands that were on it but you know he helped us out with distribution and he had a really good marketing guy and you know got our name in you know a few places that were key and uh 
hooked us up with a booking agent. And, you know, it just happened to be the same one as, uh, you know, like Earth Crisis and Hatebreed and Snapcase. But, uh, you know, we were like the lowest on the totem pole, but we were still, you know, getting consistent shows. And, you know, we never really, uh, we just never really uh, stopped for a while. Reading scene back in the day was awesome. Uh, I, I'm originally from Virginia, and a guy that was in that band SWAT, one of the older parkour bands from the 90s, uh, one of the, the guitar player used to be from where I, where I was from in Virginia, and he used to tell us about this place called Unison. And, you know, we always, you know, wanted to go up, so we started driving three hours to come up to this place, in, you know, called Unisound, and it was insane. Like it was, uh, you know, it was it, there was no charge, but it was uh, you had it was like mandatory donation, uh, and there was you know no drugs, no alcohol, no racism. You know, it was like a really solid place. There was a, there was a skate ramp in the back. They had two stages, and every show that I went to there had minimum 600 people. Uh, it was just booming here. Um, this was like regular stop for all the bands, like you know, Sick of It All, Biohazard, Sheer Terror, Shelter, 108. Um, you know, uh, countless bands, uh, Gorilla Biscuits, you know, uh, and it was cool. The first show I came up to see here was Shelter and 108, and it was insanity, pure insanity. Uh, it was on a second floor of this warehouse down the road from here, and uh, everyone there was friends. Everybody there was cool. They kept all the white power skinheads from around here from ruining the shows. Uh, it was a really sketchy place. The owner didn't have any insurance on the place. It was like broken down, like looked like something out of like Judgment Night. Uh, and the floor, you could feel the floor move. <laughs> they were, you know, it was so uh, disheveled. But uh, it was it was a good time. That you know, it was it was a regular stop for a lot of the New York bands. Um, and uh, everyone liked. It. I mean, it was it was really cool. Um, outside of that, I mean, you know. The, before even the mid 90s hit, Unisound had shut down. And when Unisound shut down, the hardcore scene shut down. I mean, we found ourselves driving, you know, minimum hour and a half away to like CC's. Uh, you know, we didn't even hit Allentown all that much, but uh, we hit, I mean, we obviously played there a few times. I mean, when Unisound shut down, hardcore in Reading kind of shut down. Um, I don't know where everybody went, but, you know, we, we when, when, when Mushmouth started, uh, it was kind of a, a revival, uh, you know, I don't want to say we're responsible for it, but we, you know, we just wanted something more going on here, so. You know, with New York, you have so much, con so much of a concentration of bands, you know, in one spot, as well as D.C. and, and Boston. Uh, PA is like so spread out that I guess there wasn't as much focus on one area, because you could say, you know, Turmoil is from Jim Thorpe and Crutch is from Stroudsburg. And you know, then you have Section Eight from uh, Pittsburgh, and built upon frustration later on. You know, and uh, us from Reading, and then a couple of bands from Philly. But it was never like Pennsylvania. You know, it was like New York is a city. Mm -hmm. Pennsylvania is an entire ginormous state. You know, so I think that's why it was kind of overlooked, just because of the lack of like the, the concentration of bands in one localized area, um, seemingly to me anyway. CCs. I mean. I, I couldn't believe the first time I went to CC's uh, to see a show. Um, I want to say the first time I went to see a show, it was like 25 to Life and uh, a few other bands. I, I can't remember off the top of my head, but there were just all these kids from all over, like, I want to say the, the woods of Pennsylvania <laughs> that were all hardcore kids. And it was really kind of shocking to me because of just what we talked about, like with New York and, and DC and Boston being, you know, city oriented, uh, you know, my, a lot of my mentality was like hardcore kids or city kids, but it wasn't, I mean, obviously it wasn't true. I mean, with Pennsylvania, I mean, the kids come from everywhere and uh, Pennsylvania kind of, I, I don't know, I think Pennsylvania's kind of like prided itself in being that way um, and not so uh, uh, rigid city-ish, if you know what I mean. Um, but uh, I don't know. Um, CC's was just a you know a really awesome place. Everybody came out. Everybody had a good time. Uh, everybody knew each other. Um, it was a really I mean it was you know a really solid. I mean it's still a solid area for for the hardcore scene. 
I mean, kids go to shows no matter how small or big, and you know, the support is always there. I mean, it's always hardcore supported by the hardcore kids, you know, in Pennsylvania, especially, you know, between Stroudsburg and Wilkes-Barre area. Like, I, I just believe that that's like a, a real stronghold in the hardcore scene in Pennsylvania, definitely. I don't know, I mean, some, some people, you know, have life-changing experiences. Uh, you know, I, I guess it's all based on the individual uh, situation, really. Um, some people, you know, literally can't fit this stuff into their life anymore. That, that's fine, but, you know, I don't think, I think anybody that does that doesn't, I mean, I, I'm, I'm a firm believer in not, like, making all kinds of excuses for why you do or you don't do things. Mm -hmm. It's just either you do it or you don't do it. Um, and, you know, if you don't do it, or you're not into it, no hard feelings, just, you know, I just don't want to hear a bunch of bullshit song and dance about it. Um, you know, there are some people who have, you know, renounced, like, their hardcore roots or, you know, whatever. Um, I think it's stupid to even do that. Just don't be in it. Mm -hmm. 